It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I want to talk about a really great application called Open Snitch. So if you've ever been a Mac user or known a Mac user you've probably heard of Little Snitch. And what that is is basically an outgoing firewall. So Mac OS, Windows, Linux, doesn't matter what system you use, they have a firewall that blocks incoming traffic and then you can open up those ports. Now whether you turn those on or off is up to you as a user or administrator of the system but they're really great at blocking incoming traffic. The problem happens when you install some kind of software or maybe a browser extension or something like that that then starts a little service that reaches out and goes out from inside your network and it creates a tunnel basically to some service you don't want to have your information and maybe it's collecting up all of the websites that you visit and sending those off to some server somewhere or maybe it's sending off your keystrokes things like that right malware spyware viruses this can happen on any system yes Linux is just more secure for for lots of reasons but a lot of it is user based the user base of Linux tends to be more technically capable in general but also because it's not as as widely used system Windows is 95 percent of the desktop systems that's where the spyware and malware attacks are going to come into play because they want to get as many people as possible, right? It's about volume. So whenever you start talking about systems like this, uh, Open Snitch is an outgoing firewall. And what it does is basically it's something like this. You see a little pop-up come up on your screen and it says, hey, I saw something just now trying to reach out from, from your network and I'm not sure you want me to, to allow that. And it's not really your network, but from this machine that you're using. And you have this option to say deny or allow, and then you can go in and set settings. And even when you see it in the list, you can go in and tell it, yep, you're allowed to go out or no, you're not. You can time limit it and all kinds of things. So it's a really cool application. It's very easy to get installed, set up and running, and I like it quite a bit. So I wanted to go over it with you guys today. So we're going to get started on that right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. All right, let's get into this uh, install here. So when you look at this page, if you scroll down just a little bit, and this is the GitHub page, I'll link this, of course, in the show notes and the description. Uh, when you come down, you'll get this link to the documentation. So we'll just open that up in a new tab here. And it takes you to their GitHub wiki page. And it has a little bit more information. So, you know, how to install or compile from sources, where you can configure, how it works, just anything you want to know about actually getting this stuff up, updated and installed. But you can go to this link here that says the release section. So we'll go to the releases and it's version 1.3.6, improvements, bug fixes, etc. And down here they've got the daemon, which actually runs the little part in the background, and then there's a GUI. So they have a deb and an RPM, uh, RPM for Fedora greater than 29, so you kind of want to watch which version you get there. And then you'll see kind of what the changes were. And then they've got the assets down here as well. So they've got tar file. They've got just different types of things that you can get. But the debs, uh, in my case, is what I'm going to use because I'm on a Ubuntu system. So, of course, if you're using Debian, Ubuntu, or Ubuntu-based, you'd want to do that. If you're using Red Hat, CentOS, Fedora, you'd want to use the RPM system. I don't think there's a snap uh, or, a, or a flat pack available for this that I've seen, but that doesn't mean that there's not. Um, but you can just kind of look here and see. And they do have ARM, and so you can see there's just different ARM versions as well for the daemon. So you can run this on a Raspberry Pi, um, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to get deb x86-64. Uh, I'm just going to save this file, and you can see it's called Open Snitch. Once that downloads, we will come over here to the terminal. And I'll bring that to the middle here a bit, and we'll just enlarge that a bit so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing and we're just going to CD into my downloads folder of course you'd CD into whatever folder you download the file to but then we just do sudo dpackage i and then uh, open snitch and I just tab to complete that and then you put in your super user password 
and it's going to tell you that it's got some dpackage errors, that there's some dependency problems. The way you fix this is really easy in Ubuntu and Debian systems. You do sudo apt install and then hyphen f, which means force. So it's just saying go install all the stuff that I need in order to make this work. So it's going to tell you it's going to take up 45.1 kilobytes of additional disk space. So we're just going to run this guy. And then we're just going to up arrow a couple times to get that install uh, again with a D package. And we're just going to hit enter again and let it run through. And it should go without any errors this time. And there we go. Everything's installed. So the daemon's installed now. That's awesome. But we really want a UI on the front of it so that it's easier to use. And that's where this comes in. So we're going to go grab this GUI. And we're going to save it. And again, it's a .deb file, but it depends on Python and pip, I believe. So we'll see if it gives us any errors when we try to do the install. And of course, you can always see what the status is there. Um, I, I don't recommend installing this through your, through your uh, software center, even though you could double click it and try to install it that way. It's just easier to do the, the Debian, uh, the, the dpkg version out of the terminal, in my opinion. But you can try, but you may, get, you may not get the errors displayed to you in that graphical interface to let you know, hey, you needed to do something extra here to actually get this to install correctly. So I'm going to clear this out and we'll do sudo dash i open snitch is the one we already did. We want the GUI and I can't remember what the heck it was called. We can look right here at our downloads though. Oh, Python 3 open snitch. There we go. So we just want to bring that back to the foreground here. So Python 3 open snitch. Yes. And it's going to go down and again you see we get some dependency problems so again we're going to do sudo apt install hyphen f just like before make sure you get that hyphen in there and again it's going to tell you we're going to install 593 kilobytes of additional disk stuff so and it's going to ask you hey this needs to install system-wide packages using the python 3 hyphen pip um, and it's going to say do you want to do this for sure and just you know, you can tab if you want to say no, but of course we want to do this, so we'll install this now. And last time I did this on my other machine, it took a while, so be patient. It could take just a little bit for this to actually go through. Um, it, it goes through a few steps here. This time it went pretty quick, and it doesn't seem to have had a problem, so we're going to go back up to our uh, .deb here and let it run. It's going to ask the same question, just say yes again, and let it kind of run through and do what it does. It's finished. All right. So now we should be able to start up our open snitch right here. And it's immediately going to start telling us, hey, there's stuff trying to reach out to the web. Um, so kind of be ready. But once it gets going, it usually goes pretty quick. There it is. So there's our first one. So I'm going to minimize this down so you can see it. And I'm going to go here and say forever. And then I'm going to say allow because I do like ExpressVPN and it's a daemon that ExpressVPN just runs. I kind of use that in the background for different things now and then. Um, so you can see that right away it pops something up. But down here in the task manager we have this open UI, open snitch UI, and you can right click and hit statistics and it'll bring up the window and then right here you see NMBD. So it kind of tries to tell you no process group. It, it's, it's, you know, you could deny it, you can allow it. This is actually something from the open snitch stuff, I believe. Um, so I'm okay with it. Now it denied it because I waited too long to give it permissions, basically. So you can expand this out. Now we see this whoopsie, whatever this is. Um, again, I don't know what this is, but it tells you that it's user bin whoopsie hyphen F. So I don't know what that is, but we'll let it, we'll just hit deny because I don't know what it is. Um, Avahi Damon, that one I want to allow. Firefox web browser allow. So you see it starts popping up a lot of stuff. Um, Docker daemon I want to allow. NX server, yes. Systemd resolve D, yes. So it's got all these things that it's going to prompt you about and especially in the first couple of days of using it you're going to get a lot of prompts. But as you go through you can clean this up. But you can see it's asking like hey there's all these things that are trying to reach out from your machine on your network and do things outside of your network. So as you do this uh, the NX node, yep. And then it kind of tells you what you've done, which is pretty awesome. So if we expand this out a little bit, we get a little bit more space here. Um, we can bring this over, and we can bring this over. 
and we can bring that over. We don't really need the, the protocol that wide, but we might want some of these a little bit wider um, so we can kind of see what's going on. And we can sort, and you can see everything's allowed right now. Um, but you can kind of look, and you can see nodes. You can see rules. So here's the, the important page to me is the rules. And uh, crony D is allowed, yes. So if we go here, we'll see that I've got a few deny rules here and this says until restart so it shows you and you expand out and you can kind of see what did I deny so what is whoopsie I don't know what whoopsie is if I want to see what that is I can go google it and I can say what is slash user bin whoopsie that's so Ubuntu event tracker or error tracker it takes the uh, crash reports that at port creates and presents them so this is this is whoopsie and it tries to reach out so this is probably okay to to allow so when you want to allow something you can go here and we've got whoopsie uh, set right here you can right click and then you can tell it I want to edit this entry and you get a nice little interface here to do the editing and you can see what it's what it's actually using as far as the node and then the primary rule it's enabled and we're gonna say allow and then we can say we always want this to be able to work and then apply and then we can close the window and you'll see that that now gets allowed so now we've only got one deny left and that was this NMBD um, and we can go look up what is NMBD the same way we just did with that so instead of this we'll just say NMBD and it's a server that understands and can reply to net BIOS over IP name service requests like those provided by Samba and CIFS. So this is just something on my network asking for name service information. And it's also something that we should be fine with allowing. So we can go back here, right click again, edit, and we'll say allow. And again, forever, that's fine. Apply and then close. And now we've got the things allowed. And we can look and it says until restart. So it's going to ask me about this again the next time I reboot this machine, unless I tell it I want it to be allowed all the time. Now, I don't know that you can do this for a bunch of them at once. No. It'll let you highlight, but when I let go, it goes away. So I can highlight one at a time here. I can edit it, and I can say always. So it's pretty easy to set these up. It's really a simple system to get installed personally. Um, you know, if you have trouble... Let me know, but it should run on Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat, you know, any, any Red Hat based system that runs RPM. It should run on Ubuntu and Debian and then ARM based systems as well. So kind of kind of check those out and make sure that you've got something like that. There's probably an Arch repo already in the Arch user repositories that will run this as well. And then, of course, you can build it from source if you want to do it that way. But I think it's pretty great because, as I said, these outgoing... These outgoing connections are things that you may not realize are happening. And look at all these things that popped up just right away. And, and over the next couple of days, I, I will see more of these. And I'll have to go out, go through, and kind of clear them out and fix them and change them and make sure the system is not doing something I don't want it to do. Um, and in particular, you might find that you install an extension in a browser, especially Chrome, Firefox, Chromium, where that extension is doing something that you don't know it's doing and you don't really want it to be doing. So you just need to tell it, hey, I didn't expect this to be happening. Don't allow that outgoing connection. And you're really making your whole network and your system much more secure by doing that. I hope you get a lot out of this little application. I think it's pretty great. Uh, if you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.